Good afternoon. Today is June 2nd, 2023. My name is Stephen Herwire. I'm the owner of Herwire Financial Plans with Direction. Before I forget, and I'll try to announce it at the end, there will be no Facebook Live on June 9th, a week from today. Today, we're going to talk about retirement preps to do now. And it'll be right after the disclosures and the market wrap up. Opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. All performance reference is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested in directly. All data is believed to be from reliable sources. However, no representation is made as to its completeness or accuracy. None of this is to be construed as tax or legal advice. Consult your advisor prior to taking any action. Last night, the Dow Jones closed at 33,060.38. Year to date, it's down about half a percent. The S&P 500 closed at 4,220.28. Year to date, it is up almost 10%. NASDAQ 100 closed at 14,439.53. Year to date, it is up a whopping 33.46%. Gold closed at $1,991.84 per ounce. Year to date, it is up 9.25%. Bitcoin index closed at 26,868.37. Year to date, it is up an even more astonishing 62.24%. U.S. dollar index closed at 103.55. Year to date, it is almost flat, up a tiny bit. 10-year treasury closed at 3.61%. This is down 0.27% from its year start. S&P aggregate bond index closed at 205.57. Year to date, it is up 2.79%. When you retire, what door do you want to go through? There's two doors you go through in retirement. Door number one is where you run out of money before you run out of life. Door number two is you don't run out of money before you run out of life. Now, I know most folks would pick door number two upon arriving at a, a retirement. The problem is if you haven't done the right things. You may not get to go through. You, you're not really choosing uh, at retirement. You're choosing all through your work life. And door number one is the default. The sooner you start saving for retirement and preparing for retirement, the easier it is. Saving early, even if it's in a small amount, may have dramatic differences. Doing nothing is not likely to end well. What matters most, and I can't hammer this enough, is when you start at a young age, there's not a significant difference between the path to doors one and two. Uh, the, you know, starting out, you start out with the path to door two being a very slight incline. By the time you reach your 30s, it's a steep incline. It might even be a staircase. By your 40s, it's a ladder. By your 50s, you're doing rock climbing. And by your 60s, it's climbing a sheer cliff face. What do you need to do to, to get to these doors? All right, door number one, as I mentioned before, is the default, all you have to do is do nothing. Just keep living your life. Don't do anything different. I don't recommend this, but some people choose it, whether they know it or not. Door number two, save early, save often. Along the way, two things are critical. Is the right amount of life insurance and disability insurance. I'm not going to get into that here. Let's just say it's really important to protect your and your family's income. And it's critical. Good news is we have decades to save for retirement. The bad news is we have decades to save for retirement. The sooner you get started, the more likely you'll get to retire in a manner and time of your choosing. So let me ask a hypothetical question. Suppose there was a bank in town that for every dollar you deposited up to a certain amount each year, somebody would come by and put in a, a, a matching dollar. How much would you put in that account? I don't know about you, I would definitely put in enough if I could afford it to get all of the other people's money. Okay, now this is how I like to illustrate saving for retirement. On the right is the amount of money you're going to need to go into retirement and do what you want. 
uh, to enjoy life after 40 plus years of working. So imagine there are weights being added, added to the lever. Now, when you're 22 and you're adding even small amounts of weights, it's going to have a much more dramatic effect than the larger weights you're going to add at 44 or the even bigger weights you may be adding at 60. The more weights you add early on, the more likely it is you're going to get to choose your desired retirement age. No guarantees, but it helps. Those who fail to add sufficient weights to the lever will likely be faced with two choices. A shorter retirement, i.e. working longer, or reducing your retirement needs. In other words, taking that weight on the right-hand side and making it smaller, which means instead of doing all the things you want, doing less of them. Instead of golden years, you might experience bronze or tin years. Save early and more increases your control. Now, I'm going to give you a hypothetical. Now, keep in mind, the growth rates here are not averages. They're straight line. That means the, or the amount per year is the amount per year. It's sort of like uh, CDs from the uh, early 80s, maybe, maybe early to mid 80s. Okay, this is not realistic in this day and age. And if it is, it means inflation is really high. Uh, the stock market will definitely not look exactly like this. This is strictly, strictly to illustrate the, the, uh, the effect of time on savings. Okay, so got two twin brothers, Early Earl and Late Larry. Early Earl graduated from um, engineering school, and so did Late Larry. They went to work for the same company, got the same job. Okay, Early Earl decides he's going to start saving for retirement right away. He starts putting two grand a year, which amounts to uh, $40 a week, which means uh, uh, which is equivalent of going to Starbucks once a day, maybe eating at McDonald's once a day, or one really nice dinner a week. Okay. And he keeps putting two grand in until he turns 65. If he earns 6% each and every year along that path, he'll walk away with $451,000, give or take. If he earns 8%, he'll have $834,000. And this is a $90,000 investment. Okay, now his brother Larry, instead of saving for retirement, he went out, he had lots of fun. He uh, met the girl of his dreams. Earl did too, but uh, not quite as quickly necessarily. And Larry had kids and he didn't get around to it until, until he uh, reached age 31. And then he looked at what Earl's doing, decided to follow Earl's example. He puts two grand a year in from 31 to 61. 65, sorry. If he earns 6% a year at 65, he'll have $236,000. If he earns 8% a year, he'll have $372,000. Now, there's a stark difference between those. That's obvious. Now, a couple other bad assumptions on this. Again, we're just doing this to give you an idea what time looks like. Uh, this assumes Earl and Larry never get promoted, never get raises, never decide to add more. Imagine what would happen if they decided to add more as they went along. Okay, it is less painful than you think. If your work has a simple IRA or 401k, uh, the, uh, the hit to your uh, wallet is not going to be as bad as you think, probably, if, as long as you're not using a Roth account. I'll come back to the Roth in a minute. If you're thinking if I put $10 a week into my simple uh, IRA or 401k, they'll have $10 less to spend each week. It's likely you're not gonna be correct because it's more likely, because depending on your withholding, you'll see a reduction somewhere between six and $8 a week. So in the short term, putting $10 a week into a non Roth retirement account will cost you six to $8 in budgetary cash. Okay, to make it even better, if you've got one of these plans at work, your employer will be adding money to it. Now, um, if it's a Roth, I'll just tell you, if you put $10 in, $10 will come out of your check. But there's a, another benefit we won't talk about later to do in that. So 
are you leaving money on the table? You know, one of uh, my firm's philosophies is always take free money uh, unless, you know, unless there's an overriding reason not to. Because the apocryphal bank I talked about earlier, it's your employer. One of the benefits is that your employer is willing to contribute to your retirement. Your employer wants to be your partner to maximize the chances you retire in a manner and time of your choosing. However, it requires you to pitch in too. Now, one of the reasons that holds people back from putting money in is they look at the dozen to four dozen funds to pick and they have no idea what to pick. Okay, don't let this stop you. Just contribute, pick one. And uh, as long as you don't leave it in the wrong one, for a long period of time, it won't hurt you much. Missing out on that match, in my opinion, will hurt you more. So once you get the thing going and get used in getting the free money, then contact your financial advisor. They can help you figure out which funds are right for your situation. Okay, so as you're traveling through your work life and into retirement, you go through three stages. Okay, you get the working years. Once you graduate, be it from welding school, law school, or engineering school, you're going to need a plan. The major question a plan answers at that point in time is, how much do I need to save each and every week, month, whatever, in order to, in order to uh, retire in a time and manner of my choosing? Then we get to the last five to 10 years before you retire, what I call the glide path, where the ship is mostly built, but you want to make sure the USS retirement is ship shape and ready to set sail on the appointed day. Then once you get into retirement, the big question is, you know, how do I avoid running out of money before I run or before I run out of life? And then after that, it's legacy. Does what I worked hard for get to where I want it to either or after I'm done with retirement? I can be reached at herwirefinancial.com. I do in-person, Zoom, and phone appointments. I'm licensed and registered across several states and can easily add states if there's a need. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can click on the schedule an appointment button in the upper right-hand corner. YouTube button is two buttons over. If you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. And if your friends want more information, they can follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. And for folks that prefer the good old-fashioned telephone, 518-631. 2569. Don't text me there. I won't get those texts. But I've got a text number 518 245 3059. Everybody have a great weekend. And remember, no Facebook Live next week, June 9th. Have a great weekend.